So uh, let's talk about ink blending. Ink blending. So uh, when I started ink blending, this is the tool we had. This is the foam we had. This is what we use to do ink blending. And so this was quite a few years ago when I started ink blending. So I got really good at doing ink blending with this particular tool. Really good. So let me just grab out a piece of paper. Let me grab out a color here. Uh, here we go. I have actually got all of my Catherine Pooler inks here beside me and all of my Distress Oxide. So let me pick. I'm just going to pick Oxide, uh, the Oxide one. This is Fired Brick. So the original ink pads, you would just lay it down on your ink pad pick up your ink and then you come over to your surface and you'd have to start off your surface and work on. So you'd start off and you'd work on. Now the trick to this is, is you'd always have to keep it at an angle, at a slight angle. If you did it straight up and down, that's where you got the lines. See that? So if you do it straight up and down, that's where you get the lines. If you hold your uh, tool, and I like to hold this particular tool, I, I hold this way. If you hold it at a slight angle, you don't get that edge. Okay, do you see the difference? Straight up and down, you see the circle. At an angle, you still get a little bit of fanning in here, but it's not quite as abrupt as you do it up and down. So that's really important. If you're using this tool with this foam, always start off the page and keep it at an angle, not up and down, but a slight angle. Okay. That one I dropped, it actually slipped out of my hand. Okay. There you go. So that was how we did blending with this. Okay. So yeah, that's really important. That is something we learned very early on. It was one of the techniques that Tim let us know is to keep it at an angle. Now you can hold yours any way that you find comfortable. This tool, I hold this way. You may want to hold it up here. You may want to hold it here, whatever you find most comfortable. For me, I hold it this way. Just that is what works for me. So yeah, this is how we used to do it. Okay. Now, I always tell people that to get a good blend, you have to go over it more than one time. You can't expect to get a good blend the first time through. I will let you in on a little secret, my secret. I am a heavy handed blender, which means I press very hard, um, especially with these. But I also blend over and over and over and over again to get a nice, solid, even color. If that's what I'm going for, that's what I do. Okay, so blending with this, that's one of my first techniques that I'll tell you. Never hold it straight up and down. Now, if that's the look you're going for, because I have done blending with these where I've done circles where I've gone through and I've done circles. That's another technique. If that's the look you wanna do, this works perfectly for it. If you wanna just do random circles all over your page. And I have done that, I've done that in my art journal and it works great. But if you're looking to do a blend, always remember slight angle and you work off the page and on to your paper. So off and then on, off and then on, off, and then on. And then you get a much nicer blend. Hopefully that's showing up good there on camera. There you go. So yeah, if you go straight up and down from off the page, but you're straight up and down, you're gonna get that hard round edge. Again, if that's the look you're going for, then you're good to go. But if you're looking for a blend, always keep it at a slight angle. Okay. So that was the original blending foam. Now I do get asked by people, just give me a second. Um, 
can I get you to do something for me? Sure. I forgot to grab my baby wipes. If you can grab me some from the back. Okay, so that's the original blending foam. Now I asked people, or people asked me, can you blend paint with this? Yes, you can. You can absolutely blend, blend, blah, 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 blah. You can actually, you can use these with paint. You absolutely can. Thank you. Now, when it comes to the brushes, can you blend paint with this? You probably could. Would I recommend it? Uh, I would not. And I will tell you why. It's because you will get the paint traveling into the depths of those bristles and it's very hard to get out. Um, I have seen people do it. Uh, I personally would not do it, but again, personal preference, that's just me. Okay, so let's just recap this. The original blending foam with the original tool, techniques, slight angle, find a comfortable uh, way to hold your tool. Uh, this is how I find it most comfortable is holding it like this and you start off the page, blend on at a slight angle. Okay, so that is that one. Let's just leave that there for a second just in case anyone else has any questions. <clears throat> Let's grab another piece of paper here. So now Tim Holtz has come out with this domed foam. Like the original, but this very nice domed angle. So you don't have that hard edge of foam like you do on this one. That is the difference. Now. Full disclosure, this is the first time I'm using the dome foam. I'm sorry, Instagram, I just realized I am not on camera. This is my first time using the domed foam on this tool. So if I was to bring up the blending brush, you can see, I don't know if that's coming up on screen, you do get the curved edge and you have a curved edge on here. So very similar, except this is foam. These are bl bristles. Okay, so let's try this. Let's try the domed foam and see the results that we get. Let's do faded jeans. Here we go. We're gonna ink it up the same way. Around and around and around on that ink pad. We're gonna pick up the ink there and I'm gonna hold it the same way. It's a lot thicker than this one. First thing I notice. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off the paper and work on to my cardstock. If you're wondering what I'm using, this is the 140 pound uh, paper from Vicki Booten, her foundations paper. It's super smooth, 140 pound, great for mixed media. Okay, let's start off and work our way on. Again, I'm holding it at a slight angle. I probably don't need to, but let's, it's what I'm used to, so let's do that. Okay, not bad, not bad. Just for side-by-side -side comparison, I'm gonna take that off and I'm gonna put one of the originals on just so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. Never hurts to compare, picking up the ink, and what this could mean is I may need to re-ink this ink pad, but try it. Okay, off and work our way on. Interesting, this definitely gives you a better edge blend. Definitely like the domed one. Let's go back to dome now. Need to get that centered on there, there we go. Inking up that again. Now, let's see what happens if you come on straight up and down. Straight up and down, not at a slight angle, but straight up and down, let's see what happens. Lovely, no hard edge, no hard edge. See, this is straight up and down using this foam. Straight up and down using the dome foam, no hard edge. See that? You've got a nice gradient edge there. Lovely. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay, one more thing we can do. Remember I did the straight up and down circles with this one? Let's see what happens when we do the straight up and down with the dome foams. 
beautiful. No hard edge, lovely. Gorgeous, the dome foams are amazing. Thumbs up, I love them. So if you love using the foams and you haven't warmed up to using the blender brushes, the dome foams will probably change the way you blend. Definitely recommend, love it. There we are, side by side. Let me just take off this domed one. See the difference? Gorgeous, yes, the dome foams, lovely. Just tried them, this is my first time trying them, haven't tried them yet, look at the difference it makes. Amazing, amazing, lovely. Now, one other thing I wanna try, let's do this, let's try the dome foams through a stencil. Let's try that. I'm gonna move these out of the way just for a moment. We can come back to them if anyone needs to take another look. What I'm gonna do, let me put, I'm gonna take this stencil. This is one of the new, stencil, uh, new stencils from Paper Rose that we just got in yesterday. My first time trying it, oh, it's gorgeous. Okay, so we're going to use, um, I don't know why. Here we go. Um, let's try a new color. Let's try something new. Let's do fossilized amber just for fun. Okay. So one side here, we'll stick on this side. We're gonna do it with the original flat foam. And on this side, we're gonna use the dome foam. Gonna see the difference. Let's see what difference it makes side by side. I'm just gonna take some of these magnets just to hold my stencil down there. Okay, dome foam, here we go. On this side of the stencil, dome foam, just going over it. I'm doing it straight up and down. Straight up and down with that. Oh, that's my bad. Let me just line that up and just, there we go. Here we go, okay. Okay, let's take this, same color, flat foam. Let's do it on this side. Let's see if there's any difference. There may not be, but let's see what happens through a stencil. Okay, let's reveal, see what we've got. Uh, it may not be hard, it may not be easy to see, but you definitely get a better uh, fade out blend using the dome foam, this side, than you do, you get a much harsher end to the blend using the original foam on this side. But still, both gorgeous, still love them. Still, lo that's a gorgeous stencil. That is a gorgeous stencil. I'm just saying that out, out loud right now. Uh, just in case you're wondering what that one is, brand new from Paper Arts or Paper Rose, uh, it's called Stacked Petals. Yeah, that that's a gorgeous stencil. But yeah, definitely you definitely see um, a much softer edge using this. Yeah, than using this on this side. Uh, again, uh, through a stencil, not as big of a difference as you saw using it just straight to paper. Okay. But again, still lovely. I'm still liking the dome foams. Yes, I will be adding these to my stash because there are so many ways you can use your blending foams. Okay, um, just trying to find the lid for my fossilized amber. <clears throat> okay, yes, so for the people. Yeah, <laughs> Carrie Ann, you're funny. No, yes. I do not like stencils at all, at all. Yeah, said no one ever. <laughs> You're funny, that's funny. Okay, uh, let's get another piece of paper here. Let's just slide that under that same stencil. 
Um, now, I get people asking me about blends, blending. Blending three colors. Right now, we've just done um, one color. Let's start blending three colors. Let's do three colors. Uh, let me grab this one I'm going to do all with the dome foams. Let's do all dome foams this time. Um, let's stick with fossilized amber. Let's do, just give me a moment to find a color here. Let's do fired brick. Fired brick and one more. Let's do vintage photo. Let's do those for fun. Let's do those. So if anyone's wondering uh, these, what is this? Uh, the reason why I sometimes use these and why I switch to these uh, and we sell these ones in the store. We call them Glending Tools because Glenn makes them. Um, I found, especially when I was doing a lot of ink blending, that my, my uh, thumbs would hurt. I have uh, dislocated both of my thumbs several times over my life, so I have a bit of arthritis. So I find gripping these, especially because I am such a heavy-handed blender, um, my, I would my thumbs would just start aching. So Glenn came up with this idea. So I, I'm not gripping them quite as hard or as tightly because this one is a bit thinner and I'd be gripping them differently. So I found with this, it worked a little bit better for me. And we have heard from uh, some crafters who have carpal tunnel and arthritis that they like using these rather than these blending tools. Again, personal preference. It's whatever, whatever uh, people find works best for them. Um, I am, I am wondering about this. I'm just wondering if I seriously want to commit to this color. I'm, I'm having my doubts. Let's do right persimmon instead. Okay, perfect. We're going to do a blend. I am going to change the orientation of my paper for this. Okay, there we go. Let's start blending. Blending, blending, blending. Love it. There we go. Okay, how do I do blending? Actually, you know what? Let's not do it with a stencil first. Let's do it straight to paper so I can show you how I do my ink blending. And I should uh, warn you, I have been doing this for many years. If you are new to ink blending, don't get frustrated. Don't lose hope. Uh, ink blending does take a bit of time to get used to. It just does. I'm not going to uh, sugarcoat it. It. I was not a good ink blender when I started, but because I've been doing it for so long, you just learn how to make it work for you. Okay, I'm going to start with fossilized amber. I'm going to start at one end. blend. I'm going to keep going until the color runs off of my pad, until there's no more yellow coming off. I'm just going to keep going back and forth, coming down about a third of the way because I've got three colors. Okay, so there's not much color coming off that anymore. Good, love it. Color number two. Let's do ripe persimmon. Okay. Now we're gonna go in the middle, back and forth, back and forth. Gonna pick up more ink, back and forth. I always say your first layer of ink, um, the first layer of ink is your prime, your primer. Your next layers are going to get darker and more smooth. 
So don't think that blending is one layer bake. It usually for me is two or three. Okay, perfect. Now you can see I've got this line. How do you get rid of that line? I'm gonna go in with my yellow, not adding more ink. I'm just gonna go back and forth over that line. I'm gonna go back with my orange, same thing. And you're just working those colors together. Okay, see that? That harsh line is gone. Now this works really well with the oxides. If you're using original Distress inks, uh, they don't have the pigment composition in it like the oxides do, so the blending of the two colors is a little bit different, okay? It's a little bit harder, not impossible, but it does take a little bit more, but because these have the pigment ink, it makes blending with them very easy. Okay, let's do Fired Brick, our third color. i turn this around. Start at this end. Hello. There we go. Okay, see that? Good, I love it. But I'm gonna go in with my orange and I'm gonna go back over those two colors where they meet. Okay, there we go. I am loving that blend. See that? I need... I held it up to the light. I could see I didn't have enough red on there. So again, I've only put one layer. I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna do another blend of the fired brick. You can move that somewhere else if you need to go somewhere. Um, yes. Yeah. Yep. Ooh, much nicer. Much nicer. Definitely needed that second coat. I always say the second coat um, is, is a great, great... The second one is much better. Now I'm going to go back in. I'm going to add more orange. Good, loving that. Okay. One more time with fossilized amber. There we go. That is the way how you create the seamless blend with distress oxides. Now I always tell people, they come to me and they're like, oh, but mine, I don't like it. It's not the same as yours. And I always say, how many times did you go over it? And I'm still, I'm holding it up to the light. I'm looking at it on the screen and I'm still seeing this harsh line in here. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I can see it here. So I'm actually gonna go in again with my red and I'm gonna blend a little bit further into the orange. Now, the reason why I'm using this is because this ink has a pigment in it, it does stay wet for a while. So if I was to put my finger on there, I'm gonna leave my fingerprint in it, which I don't wanna do. <clears throat> okay, there we go. I am loving that blend. Dropped it on my ink pad. See, crafty mistakes. There you go, blended it out. Now you don't even see it. <laughs> There you go. The name of the middle color is Ripe Persimmon. So these are the colors I used. Fossilized Amber Ripe Persimmon Fired Brick. That is the color blend I did there. 
And I'm sorry my camera's backwards, I forgot to flip it again. So fossilized amber, ripe persimmon, fired brick. There you go. Okay. And I used all domed foams for that. And let me just say, they are wonderful. If you're looking for a review of the dome foams, absolutely fabulous. I have nothing but good things to say about these. If you're, uh, if you're one of these people and you just have not uh, gravitated towards the brushes, this is a good option. This is a wonderful, wonderful option. Now I haven't used these with paints, um, but I think with paints, I would probably still use these. Uh, but yeah, with inks, the dome foams, love it, love it, love it. Now, people ask me, what do you do with your foams? Do you wash them? I, I absolutely do. Actually, up at the demo bar, I've got two buckets, one with the clean foams, one with dirty foams. And usually at the end of the week on Saturday night before we go home, I throw them all in a colander that I keep in the janitorial room. I put in a bit of soap, I put in a bit of water, I lather them all up really good, and then I rinse them really good until the water runs clear. I spread them out on a towel to dry until Monday, and then I've got a whole bunch of clean blending foams that I can use over and over and over again. That's what I do. Yep, and I, whether I'm using ink, whether I'm using paint, I keep washing my foams over and over until they basically fall apart and then I can't use them. And then I toss them out and then I um, will just keep using them until I need to buy more. But yeah, if you're looking for a review of the ink blending foams, the domed, love them. Love them and they're good. And I can't say enough good things. So there we are, there's our blend with these. Before we move on to the blending um, where did my, oh, here we go. Let's do this on top. Let's blend through a stencil, shall we? Just for fun. Let's do this for fun. And if we can't have fun crafting them, what is the point? Perfect. Okay, let's move that aside. What I'm going to do is I am going to stick with fired brick. I'm going to fire, do, use fired brick through the stencil over this entire thing. Okay, I'm going to start at the end where it had the fire brick on it. Just going back and forth. Back and forth and back and forth and blending and blending. Just keep blending, just keep blending, just keep blending, blend, blend. <laughs> now I want to watch Finding Dory. Yep. Okay, I think I'm done. That was fun. Just keep blending, just keep blending, just keep blending, blend, blend. Ooh, that's fun. Look at that. Ooh, I am loving that. Gorgeous. Uh, gorgeous. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> oh, I am totally loving that stencil. I love it. Oh, yes, Erlene, that is another thing. You can, and I, that's what I used to do before we opened the store, is I did used to Velcro them to the bottom, um, these ones. Yes, that's what I, you can tell. That's what I used to do. Now, the dome foams are a bit thicker, so it, they wouldn't sit flat, because they are a bit thicker. But these ones, yes, that's how I used to do it. Yeah. There we go. Wonderful, okay, that was fun. Now, uh, before we move on, I'm just gonna show you this because you know I, I can't waste the ink. Don't waste the ink. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my stencil off camera, I'm gonna take my spray bottle, gonna, a couple spritzes of water, just a couple spritzes there, lay, lay down a piece of paper. Just gonna roll that on there.
And look at that. Positive and negative, using the stencil, gorgeous, love it. How much fun is that? Cool, right? Okay, I'm gonna set those aside. Now, for those of you who are using blending foams, maybe you're wondering about the blending brushes. What is the difference? Why do I need these in my life? Do I need them in my life? I don't know. Let's talk about blending brushes. All right, I'm just gonna clean up my stencil. Just let me spray it with some water, clean that up. There we go. Okay, blending brushes, all the blending brushes. So the original one that came out was from Picket Fence. They called these the life-changing blender brushes. They had the full set. It was a pack of 10. You could get a pack of four. You could get a pack of two. Um, so uh, I, this is what I started with. These are the first blending brushes I ever used. They called them the life-changing blender brushes. And um, they were. They did change my life. This is a very dense brush. These are all bristles. This is not foam. They are dense bristles. Very dense, okay? There you go. So I've got that one. The Gina K, which is a new one for us. Again, this is a blending brush. Those are bristles. This one is losing bristles. Let me just pull those out. So the difference between I'm gonna put them like this. These, very dense. This one you will get a very dark, very full blend because these are very dense, dense bristles, tightly together. This one from uh, Catherine Pooler, the bristles are not quite as dense. They're quite, I'm not gonna say loose, but they're not as dense. I'm trying to think of another word to say. The Gina K, is somewhere in between these two. So if you're looking at getting into blender brushes, what is my suggestion? Well, my suggestion would be is to start with a two pack, which we sell the two pack, I believe of the Gina K. Start with two. I have, people ask me, how many blender brushes do you have? I have many, I have many blender brushes. So I do have them here at the demo bar. You're welcome to come to the store if you're local. You're welcome to come and try blender brushes. We'll sanitize all the handles. You can use them. You can see what works for you. Plus any of our craft consultants can help you with any of your questions. But let me just tell you my thoughts on these. So these I started using about two years ago. Uh, the Studio Catcha, which we can no longer get. I started using these about a year and a half ago. Uh, these two I've just started using just within the last couple of weeks. So these ones are brand new. These ones I've been using for a long time. Now, other blender brushes, uh, we're sold out of these right now, but I will be carrying them again. The ergonomic blender brushes from Pink and Main. So you're wanting to know what options are out there for blender brushes. It is endless, absolutely endless. So there's these three plus pink and main. These are called the ergonomic blender brushes because you can hold them in your hand. These ones I still, I think cause I'm so used to these and I'm so used to these that I find these, uh, they feel more awkward to me, but I do have them at the demo bar. People are welcome to come in and try them. Some people absolutely love them, love them. Here we go. So these are, again, these are bristles, very soft, very, this one is two inches across. This is a one inch. Uh, card makers I hear love this one. If you work on maybe scrapbooking pages, uh, this one is what I hear they like, okay? Oh, am I frozen? I'm not frozen on my iPad. <clears throat> I 
What about Tim's brushes? Um, I am unaware of brushes that Tim has. I am unaware of what those are. I've never heard of him having brushes. He may use a set of brushes, but I don't know which ones those would be. If Tim had brushes, I would have them. Uh, the, uh, the other set of brushes, which I don't have, Tailored Expressions. Uh, I don't have a set of those, but I have used them and I would say they'd be very close to the Gina K. Very close the same there, okay? Okay, so let's start working with these. What is the difference between working with foam and working with a brush? So let's go back, stage one, let's go back to plain. I've got three brushes. Let's pick one single color and I will show you what you can get. Okay, so going back to these, very similar. You don't need to stop off the, you don't need to start off the page with the blender brushes. You can start in the middle, just like you can with these. So the life-changing blender brushes from Picket Fence Studio. Let's ink those up. There we go. Inking it up. And again, a personal preference on way that you hold these. Oh, oh, Leslie, are you talking about the retractable blending brushes? I believe that's what you're talking about. Sorry, I forgot about those. Um, you know, I've used those. Uh, I, you know, as some people love them. I am not a fan of them. Um, some people absolutely love them. And I believe that's the one you're talking about, the retractable blending brushes uh, from Tim Holtz. Yes, I've used them. I've had them demoed. Um, not a fan, but some people absolutely love them. Okay, so life-changing blender brush from, here we go. Actually, Glenn, do we have any life, do we have any retractable blending brushes? Maybe grab me one and I'll demo with that too. Okay, let's start with this one. So start in the middle of the page. Okay, there you go. Middle of the page blend. Blend, blend, blend. Just keep blending, just keep blending, just keep blending, blend, blend. Just keep blending, just keep blending, just keep blending, blend, blend. Okay, there we go. Life-changing blend brush. And the middle of the page didn't start off the, off the page. Does that mean you can't? No, you can. And I do that if I want to get a hard edge like that. Perfect. You might want to put this on my... And for you, Leslie, I am going to use the... This is what Leslie was talking about, the Distress Blending Brushes. Yeah, if the volume is turned down. I'm gonna turn it down right Yeah, and then just plug it in. I'm going to try this for Leslie Hines, just like the ketchup. Mama. <laughs> Ketchupy. Okay, so we will add one more blending brush to the repertoire today. Oh my word. Right? Pretty. New stencil. Love it. Yes. Okay, life-changing blender brush. There we go. Let's move on to Gina K. Same color. Same color. Let's pick up some ink. In the middle. Here we go. Wow, what a difference. Look at that. Different. Life-changing blender brush. Gina K. Blender brush. Ooh, different. Let's move on to Catherine Pooler. Let's see what happens here. Mm. Okay, let me point something out. Now that I've got all three on here. Actually, here we go. Let's let's do this one. Let's get all four on there. Okay, so this is the retractable blending brush from Tim Holtz. I've used these. Uh, not a fan. I have to say, not a fan. But 
for Leslie, I will do this. Uh, now this one, because it's retractable, you can move this up and down depending on if you want your bristles looser or you can move it up if you want your bristles a little bit more dense and not moving around. Let's just put it all the way down and leave it like that. Let's pick those up, pick up some ink, and we're losing bristles. There we go. Okay, come back over to our paper. Um, yeah, it's all right, it's okay. Is it my favorite? Nope. Let's move it down. Let's make it a little bit more dense. Pick up that, pick up that ink. If you want a little bit more dense, there you go. So, okay, let's try that again. Life-changing blender brush, pick a fence. I went over this one twice. Gina K blender brush. With the with the bristles being a little bit further apart, you do they do pick up more ink. They do soak in. With this one, I do find that the ink stays on top. With these, the ink, you can see it here, how far down that goes. This one, even looser, the ink goes further down the bristle of the brush. But again, it's all personal preference, whatever you like. Now, I'm regretting using purple. Now, some people say, well, what do you do? Do you use a different brush for every color? I don't. Some people like that, which is perfectly fine. The Tailored Expressions have um, the brushes where they're the different, uh, the different handle colors. So one's red, one's blue, and blah, blah, blah. Now, if you've got a set like I do, I've got like tons like this. I've got tons of black ones. And you want to specify one for a color, Make It by Marco has the little uh, brush buddies. So you can uh, take these, you can snap one onto a particular brush, like so. And then that brush would be designated for only blue. I don't do that because I wash my brushes every single night. Oops, I'm gonna set those aside. Um, so I don't worry about that. Now, some people like to, um, like what if they wanna use this particular size for multiple colors? So what I suggest, grab your, just making sure this is still wet. This is my uh, Lawn Fawn Stamp Chamois. I've got it in my Make It By Marco Stamp Chamois case, which I love. And I can come in here and I can rub my brush onto my stamp chamois. Taking that ink off. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm going to grab a piece of paper towel. I'm gonna come over here <clears throat> and give that a wipe off. Wipe, 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 make sure all that ink comes off. I can still see purple. I'm gonna come back over here to my stamp chamois, see if I get more off. Nope, not a whole lot of purple coming off there. I'm gonna come back over here and dry it and wipe off uh, any residue of ink that's left on there. There you go, taking it off. Now, will I still wash this at the end of the day? Yes, I will, because there could still be ink and you can see it, it's purple down in there. So my surface is fine, but I still have ink down in the bristles, so I still will wash this at the end of the day. How do I wash it, you ask? Well, let me tell you. I have a brush cleaner. Brush cleaner. So I will gather up all my dirty brushes, go into the washroom, I will put a little bit of hand soap on there, run my brush under some water, lather it up really good. So if there's purple on here, my foam is gonna turn all purple. It's gonna be purple, purple, purple. I start running it under some water keep scrubbing until all of the water runs clear. And then I take it out to my work surface. I put down, um, I have an old towel in the back. I put it down and then I lay my brushes down like so. And by the morning, they're all dry. Any residue of ink has now been soaked up by my paper towel 
and I am good to go. All of my brushes are clean. Let me do that with my Gina K. Just gonna go on here with my stamp chamois. Take off as much of that ink as possible. Grab my paper towel. Now the one thing I do have to say about the white bristles is they stain. Uh, I have not been able to get these white ever again. This is what they look like. I've never used this brush. This is what they look like. This is what they look like after I wash them. So if that uh, causes you some anxiety that you can't get it white again, um, yeah. Is it all good? I have this, but she's saying she's I've spotlighted on her, so I think that's how she has her setup. I don't think that's officially what's going on. You can't spotlight it on here until you have more than two people. Yeah. Mm, no, you have to wait until a third person joins. I just like to join. Sorry, we have a class running right now, so we're kind of working, working on that. Okay, there we go. Look, I'm rubbing it on my stamp chamois. I'm getting no more purple on there. I'm gonna go over here to my paper towel, rub off as much of that purple as possible, and now that brush is dry. I can use that on another color and go right ahead and keep working. But again, I strongly suggest at the end of your crafty day that you go into the washroom and you give your brushes a really good deep cleaning with a brush cleaner and a little bit of warm water and soap. And then, um, then you'll be good to go. We are, no more purple. Here we go, clean brushes. Okay, let me do one more demo using all of these brushes. And I did forget to clean this one. This one I would clean the exact same way. Oops. Now I know Tim, I've seen his videos and he has, I, I think one for every color. He actually color codes the ends and he uses one for every color. Uh, that's a lot of blender brushes. <laughs> So yeah, that's what I would do is I would just wash it and then use it, be able to use it for multiple colors. And then I would wash this one the exact same way. A little bit of soap, warm water on here. And there you go. And then it would be clean for the next day. Okay, I am not ready to stop being crafty. So let's do, let's do, oh, I didn't demo with these. Well, you have to know what these look like. Okay, these are the life-changing blender brush, or sorry, these are the Pink and Main ergonomic blender brushes. They come in these nice. Oh, one for each color group. Yes, that's right. Okay, there we go. So we've got the large, we've got the mini. I've got a piece of paper. Let me grab a color here. Um... Here we go. Let's use these two. Picking up my ink. And just start blending. Now I do have to say when you're blending with this, the bristles on this are so soft. They're super soft. It hardly even feels like you're, you're blending with a brush because it's so super soft. Okay, so that is the large blender brush from uh, Pink and Main. There you go. 
And for those of you who took advantage of our sale, our scrappy hour sale last week, you would have saved 25% off on these brushes and now we're sold out. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna go in with the mini brush. I'm gonna put this one through a stencil and blend it into the Twisted Citron. There you go. Both beautiful brushes. There you go. Yes, Natalie, I do remember you grabbing four of those. So, um, yeah, uh, some people love these. Uh, they're not my favorite just because of the way you have to hold them. It's just not comfortable for me. But um, some people absolutely love them. And they are gorgeous brushes just for the way you ha uh, uh, hold them. Uh, they're just not for me. And again, that's just personal preference. So when I do clean these, I'm gonna come over here and put some of this over top of the Twisted Citron. There you go. A Little bit so you can see it there. Um, how do you clean these? The exact same way, using a brush cleaner, little bit of warm water and soap. And there you go, you can ink that up, or uh, uh, foam that up take off the ink really well, works great. And then to leave it to dry, I just pop it into the holder like that and I let it um, air dry like that overnight, okay? So that's what I do with the pink and main. And again, gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Yeah, they're great brushes. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not saying they're not great brushes. They are really great. I uh, the way to hold them just not comfortable for me. But I hear from a lot of people who absolutely love them. They love the ergonomic way you hold them, which is great. Love it. Glad people are loving them. Okay, so I'm gonna put those aside. I'm gonna put that aside right now. So I am going to do one more blend with the brushes through a stencil. If you have any questions, now is the time to ask because after I'm done this last demo, I will be shutting the camera off. We'll be signing off. But uh, before I do that, I do want to remind you that Scrappy Hour is happening tonight. It is Wednesday. So of course, Scrappy Hour happens tonight. Don't forget it's 10 sheets of cardstock for $5. 25% off pink and main again, but all the brushes are gone. Yes, sorry about that. If you didn't get them last week, I'm sorry, they're gone. 25% off pink and main, so that includes stamps, dyes, and stencils, and 33% off Wild Whisper. And tonight and tomorrow night are the last two nights to take advantage of these, de of these deals. These deals will be changing next week. Give me one moment, I need to have a drink of coffee. Okay. Anyone have any questions so far about ink blending that I haven't answered yet that maybe you're still wondering about? Anyone, anyone, anyone? I'm gonna grab a new stencil. Ooh, this one is new. This one is from a new being a Wakely one. Ooh, that one's fun. That one's called Line Circles. Let's grab another piece of paper here. This is a large stencil. I've got a two size paper. So I am just going to uh, fit my paper in there as close as I can get to centered. As close as I can get. There we go. There we go. Let's start holding some of these down. I joined late. Did you show the rounded spudge day? Are you talking about these, the domed? 
Yes, you can use, great question, Tanya. I didn't touch on that. Uh, can you use any type of ink? Yes, I have actually used it with many different types of ink. I've used it with the original Distress inks. I have used them with uh, Catherine Pooler, which I will use on this next demo. So let me grab a couple colors of Catherine Pooler for fun. Let's grab a few of these. Okay, so Catherine Pooler is a dye ink. So this would be like the original Distress inks, which is a dye ink. I demoed with my Distress Oxides. I have one designated brush. You can see this one is black. This is my one designated uh, one for using my archival black or my Gina K inks. So this one is designated black archival inks. And the reason why I have one like this is um, so I can do edging. And because it is archival, I will never be able to wash it. It will be black forever and ever and ever. So this one, yes, I do have one designated black one. Okay, there you go. Uh, somebody was asking about paint with these. Um, I've never seen anyone use paint with it. Uh, the reason why I hesitate to use paint with these is uh, of the paint getting really far down into those bristles and being very hard to get out. Not saying it's impossible. Um, myself, I would avoid it, but uh, you could certainly do it. Uh, I would just make sure that you wash it right away. Don't let that paint dry in there. I would not do that. Yeah. Okay, yes, if you're talking about these, Michelle, we did demo these right at the beginning. So you can go back and watch, uh, watch that at the beginning where I did that. Okay, perfect. Let's grab three brushes here because I've got three colors. Three brushes, three colors. Let's do it with these. But yes, I suggest if you're using blenders brushes, I would make sure to use water soluble inks uh, like I said I have one designated one for black my black archival I have one designated brush that's all I use it for okay inking this is Catherine Pooler <clears throat> picking up the ink the exact same way I'm gonna go I'm going to do it kind of random across these circles because I don't want them all to be like solid colors. Okay, there we go with Catching Rays. Let's do Fiesta Blue. Fiesta Blue and Samba. Okay, I'm going to go back in with my catching rays. Going to, oops ink up a little bit more, add in some more color. Okay, perfect. For those of you who do ink blending through stencils, or maybe you don't, you're looking at that going, what the heck is going on there? The real magic happens when you remove the stencil. Ooh, that's pretty. That looks like Easter egg colors. Very pretty, very, very, very pretty. Now remember, we've got ink on there. Don't waste your ink. Give that a spray of water. Good. Piece of paper, lay it down. Let's do an ink transfer. And take my kitchen roll, roll it over top. Make sure we've got good contact between stencil and paper. <clears throat> Ooh, that's fun. That worked out well. 
Now, Stacy, it's just the Vicky Boot and free orders you're waiting for. There you go. And blending, blending, and blending, that blending. The end of next week, we just found out. There you go. Should you use pixie spray when the stencils have small designs that catch on the brushes? Uh, yes, actually you can. That is a very good point. Um, I do use pixie spray quite a bit with stencils that have, um, here we go. Let me grab that stencil back again. So this stencil, because I just took it out of the package, I haven't had a chance, but yes, see all those little itty bitty things that move. These actually aren't too bad considering how skinny they are. But yes, this could do with some Pixie Spray. What is Pixie Spray? For those of you who have never heard it, it is a low tack spray that you can use on stencils. Not only stencils, but I've heard people using it on their Cricut mats or mats for their cutting machines because it adds just a light tack. But yes, you can spray your stencils. It makes it so it's just slightly tacky. That way when you put it on your paper, you press it there and your stencil will stick to your paper while you blend it and then it will peel off and not leave any sticky residue behind. There you go. So that was today's demo on the domed foam. The original foam. Where did that one go? Here we go, let's show those. So this was the original foam blend. This was the dome foam blend on this one. I don't know where my... <laughs> I don't know where my blue one went. Anyhow, this one was dome foam. And this was using dome foam to do an ombre blend plus stencil over. And then the rest of the ones we did were using the blender brushes. So whatever your preference, whatever you like to use, um, find a tool that works for you. Find a tool that uh, you're comfortable using, whether it's the Tim Holtz blender brushes, these brushes from Gina K or Catherine Pooler, or the foams. Many different ways to use them, different results for everything. But yeah, if you're in the city and you want to come and try out a blender brush before you commit to it, maybe you wanna try the dome foams before you commit to those, come on in, come up to the demo bar. We'll grab out some stuff for you to use and you can try it and see if it works for you. There you go. If you have more questions, you can add them into the comments. I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. But I hope you enjoyed this demo. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a great week. Thank you for joining me today, everyone. Have a great afternoon. We'll talk to you later. Bye.